So uh, something like a month ago, I started using this uh, this DeepL technology. Uh, for those of you who don't know what DeepL is, so DeepL is a machine translation technology. It's something like Google Translate, but it is uh, better. And well, after one month, after one month of using uh, these uh, this technology, I must say it's really good. It's even very good. And uh, this actually made me think, uh, well, are we done as translators? Is this technology going to replace us? Well, from what I have observed, uh, this technology is very good. There is, uh, there is no dis uh, disputing about this. Uh, and uh, sure, it's not 100% perfect, so you still have to correct it a little bit. And I would say if you are a company and uh, you have to, so to use it uh, to translate, for instance, your manual or translate your contract, uh, your contracts, uh, without actually checking it um, uh, with a human translator, it's really not a good idea. It will be a very bad idea. You still need to have a human to check your translations if they are if they are okay, uh, if they are good. So, but I think uh, we are, we translators, so we are going to transition uh, to being more correctors than translators because this deep L technology can really do most of the work uh, for us or instead uh, of uh, us. Uh, now, so how does this deep L technology actually work? Uh, this deep L technology is based on these so called neural networks. Uh, it's called convolutive neural, neural networks. It's something like Google Translate, but it's uh, better. And how does a neural network actually work? Well, it uh, actually tries to simulate the human brain. It actually tries to simulate how the neurons in your brain, in your human brain, actually uh, work. So this, uh, by brutally simplifying this, so a convolutive neural network is uh, is uh, we can say a computer algorithm that tries to simulate the human brain. So uh, you know, in a human brain, you have all these neurons, and they just uh, they can just receive signals or they can send signals to other neurons. So a neuron can receive a signal from some other neuron, and it can decide if it wants to forward this signal to other neuron or neurons or not. And uh, like this, uh, you can actually create a whole neural network and you can actually teach it stuff. You can teach it things. And how does this teaching actually work? Well, it uh, works pretty much similar to what the humans uh, do. So for instance, if we take this example, if we take the translation business as an example, you can take, for instance, a sentence, a phrase in English. And you can, you can present it to this neural network and you can say, yes, this is my sentence in English. And then I present you my translation in Czech or in some other language. And so you can say, this is the translation. And you neural network, you learn from it. And like this, you present various different sentences in your source language, in English perhaps. And you always say, and this is the translation into Czech. So, but you have to work with many, many sentences. These are like millions of sentences. So you present one, two, three, ten millions of English sentences. And you always say, and this is the translation into Czech. So you, you will always match a Czech translation or in a respective language, Czech, French, English, uh, German, I don't know. You will always match it with your source language with these uh, English phrases. So you have always, always an English phrase along with a Czech translation. And you always say this is a translation. And of course, all these translations are made by human translators. But the thing is, this neural network can actually learn from it. And if you present to this network something like one million examples, it will actually be able to find the basic structure of the language to find out how to actually translate things, what are the grammar rules, what is the vocabulary, how to actually translate stuff. So this is what neural network actually does. It works very similar to a human brain and it has some very surprisingly good results. And uh, yeah, of course, this brings me to the main uh, topic of this video. Is uh, this neural network, this deep L technology or some other future technology going to replace us translators? Uh, 
Well, I think it will, but uh, just not yet, because uh, we have to take into account that, for instance, the competition neural networks, the Google neural networks, Google neural translations, have been here since, I think, 2015. And they are already pretty good. Yeah, Google, tra Google translation is pretty good as well. And um, this technology has been here since 2015. And, uh, you know, I have been receiving translation jobs, uh, no problem, just like, just like usual. There was no significant change in the volume of, uh, of my translation work. But well, sure, yes, last year this was this uh, COVID virus, so my translation <laughs> volumes just went south, I don't know, to 10 or 20 percent of its uh, of their usual capacity. But I think this was due to COVID, not uh, due to neural network uh, technology. And then also uh, we have this, these CAD tools, they have been here for, I don't know, 10, 20, I think 20, 30 or even more years, so that's, uh, that's for sure. And uh, you know, uh, for instance, uh, manufacturing companies, small manufacturing companies, they have no idea what a CAD tool is. And I think they have even no idea what a neural network translation technology is. So they just keep, they just, uh, keep uh, ordering uh, their translations from their respective translation agencies. And I think it's actually the translation agencies who profit from these new technologies, who profit from them. But the end customers, I'm not really sure. I think the huge, the big, uh, the big customers, something like uh, big manufacturing companies, they probably know for sure about this neural network uh, translation technology. They probably know about CAD tools as well. But the small companies, I'm not really sure. I think they just don't know about it. And it's the translation agencies who are going to take advantage of this. So, yeah, this uh, makes me think. Uh, if, is, is this uh, deep L technology going to replace us? But, uh, well, if you take into account that Google translations and CAD tools have been here for many years now and the translation business has been going just like usual, so I can't really be sure. I think uh, we are not finished yet as translators. But uh, I think what will happen in future is that the translation uh, rates will go down. I think this is probably inevitable because translators, they will cease with their translation work and they will start working as correctors. And as you can see, for just correcting things, you get uh, lower, lower rates. So I think this is uh, what's uh, going uh, to happen. Yeah. Well, anyway, these have been my thoughts on uh, this, this deep L technology. Uh, just the last thing I would like to say is that I have duly implemented this deep L technology into Bohemicus. Yeah, so uh, I would like to say one more thing about this, and uh, that's uh, using the uh, deep L technology when doing your translations. So you can use it uh, thanks to Bohemicus. As you can see, I have duly added this deep L option here. You can uh, use it, uh, so you can use it now thanks to Bohemicus. You can use it in your in your offline tools such as this uh, Across, or as you can see, so the translation is here. Or you can use it in online tools such as SmartCat. You just uh, need to adjust it a little bit, but as you can see, it will work normally. And uh, what is what is the advantage of using Bohemicus with these tools is that it doesn't leave this empty empty mark, so your customer cannot see that this has been actually a machine machine translation and not a human translation. And uh, so yes, uh, this is uh, this is Bohemicus and the DeepL technology. So you can you can use it now with Bohemicus, and we'll see what's gonna happen with our profession. Um, I'm a little bit worried about this. On the other hand, uh, it's a challenge for me. Uh, maybe it's a challenge to find uh, some other occupation. I have started looking job as, <laughs> as a software developer now. And uh, it's also true that uh, I am a little bit burned out because of this uh, translation business. So maybe this DeepL technology will be actually good for me after all. And also one more thought that I have on this DeepL technology, I think uh, it will probably be similar to, uh, to this 19th century situation, to this 19th century 
factory workers who actually work in their factories and then they had these machines and the factory workers they thought that these uh, machines were taking jobs from them so the workers started destroying them but on the other hand when you look at factory workers today they have all these machines but actually they are making much more money than them they are working less hours their quality of life is higher and so I think this is what's gonna happen with this uh, with this machine translation technology and with translators as well. Yeah, well, translators will be using this technology. Maybe the rates will be a little bit lower, but translators will be able to do more work per day. So actually, they will be making perhaps the same amount of money or perhaps even more. I don't know. And we will see in future.